Hey folks, David Stewart here. Harry Potter does not suck. Now, some of you may be surprised to hear me say that considering I made a video a while back called The Rolled Dollar J.K. Rowling Technique in which I criticized portraying abused children as resilient to that abuse, uh, which to me is unrealistic and um, is kind of a, a cheap device to gain sympathy or empathy from the reader. Now, despite that complaint and Joan Rowling's gratuitous use of that technique, I actually think the Harry Potter series is a great book series and is extremely effective at doing what it does. If you are one of those people that thinks Harry Potter sucks, I think it's a mistake to just say that without thinking about why so many people disagree with you. And indeed, a great many people disagree with you. This is one of the best-selling uh, book series of all time, if not the best. It was an explosive cultural event and really continues to remain popular 20 years after the fact, which to me says that it's it's going to continue to be popular in the future, like uh, a real classic, like Lord of the Rings or something like that. Um, so what do I think is great about these books? Why do I think that they're so effective? Um, why do I think even kids and adults end up enjoying and being drawn into these books? I think it has to do with a combination of elements that were a little bit not typical for both the targeted age range, the style of book that um, the genre of book being presented, which is fantasy and mage college type stuff, um, as well as what happened afterwards once it started exploding and gaining attention um, from adults. So the main element is actually escapism. And that technique that I complain about, that abused child technique, that actually helps that escapist feeling along. A lot of companies probably weren't anticipating that escapism would be a big thing at the end of the 1990s. But when you're surrounded by technology and comfort and ease, it's easy to lose sight of the meaning of life. And I think that 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 cues into escapism in a big way. People want to go on an adventure. People want to be told that, they're me that, they have, that their life has meaning, that they're special, that there's uh, something important about their existence. And that abused child technique definitely works in this. You have Harry Potter. Um, and now I should say she doesn't lead with this on the first page. She leads with the boy who lived. And then in the next chapter, you see all the hope for this boy who lived. Um, so you start on this um, kind of a downer plus a positive note. Then you see him living underneath a cupboard and being essentially horribly abused and treated by his um, by his aunt and uncle. And so that creates a huge amount of sympathy. So she really is able to double down on a technical sense. And then you have this, this child who's brought out of this mundane and dark existence and being told that he's a wizard and that he doesn't have to live with his, uh, with his aunt and uncle anymore. He gets to go live at a wizard school. And he's not just a wizard. He's a very special wizard who survived an attack by an evil dark wizard. Um, so that really communicates to a lot of people that anti-nihilistic feeling, uh, the feeling that their life should have meaning and should have purpose. Um, and certainly a lot of kids will will feel sympathy and feel empathy for, for Harry Potter, even if they're not abused, because children live their whole lives Basically, it's out of their control, especially when you're, you know, not a, not yet a teenager or not yet uh, going to college. Um, you know, you're you're told when you're going to wake up, when you're going to go to school. You have to go to a place you don't want to go for eight hours a day and learn things you don't want to learn, take tests you don't want to take, um, sit by people who maybe hate you and tease you and, and treat you like crap. And almost everybody has some negative experience associated with public school, uh, and it's a universal Western experience. So having Having that common background, both kids and adults can respond to that need for escapism. Um, adults can respond to it because adult life tends to be rather uh, rather less interesting than we thought it might be as children. And it's, it's fun to fantasize about escaping from that to something that's more meaningful. And as children, you feel out of control. And even if you don't feel abused, you feel like like things are bad for you in many in many different times and to be able to sympathize with the character that gets to go away and do that and be totally special that really has a big impact um i didn't think i, I bet the people who were who were publishing this initially um which this one was published by scholastic or something um i i bet that they didn't think that that would be as hard hitting for as wide a range of people as it is uh but it definitely did a good job with that so escapism is to me the big number one and that's one of the reasons that this exploded. The other reason is that these are mystery books. 
And they're mystery books in a genre that typically does not have mystery formats. And they're mystery books at an age range that typically does not have mystery formats. So you've taken a format that's very popular as a genre with a particular group of readers and you brought it to a different group of readers who respond really well to the techniques because they're unfamiliar, because they're novel, and because they're very well executed. And she does execute the mystery techniques well. Standard mystery technique is where you have events happen and the context that helps explain those events is not fully realized until later in the book once you've collected enough clues and details to figure out the mystery. Now this one, the first book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone if you're in the United States, um, this book is probably the lightest on the plot, but she really nails it with uh, number two and number three, the Chamber of Secrets and the Prisoner of Azkaban as far as using a mystery format plot to really keep people reading. When people think of page turner books, they're usually thinking of mysteries, like the Da Vinci Code used a little bit of a mystery format. I've used the mystery format in one of my books in Muramasa. And it really makes people want to keep reading because you want to gather the detail that helps contextualize a mysterious event that you saw. So in this book, you have a couple of mysterious events that happen before the mystery really kicks in. And the mystery is mostly like the second half of the book. Uh, but you have Hagrid pick up a mysterious object. You have you realize that there's some mysterious object at Hogwarts that Hagrid has brought from, from Gringotts Bank because it's not safe there, that somebody's trying to get it, and you start putting all the clues together to construct all the context necessary to figure out the conflict. The conflict isn't really figured out till late in the book, um, but it's interesting enough as a mystery that, that you keep going with it until the kids kind of figure out what's going on and decide that they're going to have to do something about it um, and then at the end all the reveals recontextualize everything they saw so that they realize many of the clues that they that they were interpreting one way were were actually something different and that's the mark of somebody who's a very very good planner and very good at writing mysteries so you take that format you put it in um, in a lower age range with you know the the prose in this book is fine it's straightforward the dialogue's fine um, she nails, like many books do, that plot, the, the triangle I talk about, character settings, plot. The characters are sympathetic, they're, they're fleshed out, they're different from each other, they're interesting enough that we, that we want to see them succeed, and we want other characters to, to fail. Um, and she does a very good job of very efficient characterization, especially in this first book. Um, we have a setting that's interesting enough on its own that even before the mystery really kicks in, where we're taking Harry Potter and we're bringing him to Diagon Alley and he's buying a wand, that's all world building stuff. But the setting is interesting enough and um, and it's presented in such a, a non-direct way that you end up you end up reading to figure out more about this wizarding world and how weird it is and all the things that uh, that are going on with the with the strange world of Harry Potter. So even though the mystery in this first book doesn't really kick in till later, the world building is interesting enough to take over it. And so uh, the plot comes in really strong towards the the second half of the book. Uh, but you have a strong enough setting that it's okay to delay the plot a little bit and you have strong enough characters that it's okay to delay the plot a little bit. Once you get to the second and third books, you don't have to spend as much time on world building. So you essentially repeat the format. That's why he goes back to his family between each book. He goes back to this aunt and uncle that hate him. It's so that you can have that feeling of escapism each time you pick up the next book. You're escaping again from this mundane world and going to the, the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And it's a world full of mystery. There's lots of things that aren't explained in the world of Harry Potter. And that kind of adds to the feeling of mystery that you get from the plot. And so books two and books three have that strong uh that strong mystery plot format that I think is very effective. So when you look at Harry Potter and all the things that it does well and combines them well, it's actually quite a unique book and was very, very, uh, a, a very unique series when it, uh, I think this one came out in 1998 was when this first one came out. Um, so when these books came out, they were really, really unique. There wasn't a lot of stuff on the literary landscape that was doing what this did. And there's been countless imitators since uh, that, They'll, they'll never equal the success because it's a combination of novelty, effective use of novel techniques. And again, the novelty here is you're combining Mage College with, you know, every man escapism with a mystery plot and then handing it in a format that kids can read uh, and adults can read as, as well. So um, that's why I think this book 
ended up being repopulated. It's very, very good at doing what it does. Once you get past book three, you start getting a little bit more than just a mystery plot. You start having a lot more complicated things going on, and it moves into drawing more from um, the epic fantasy genre, and while it still maintains a lot of, of mystery workings. Book five uh, was still essentially a mystery plot, but once you get to book six, you start moving toward... Um, uh, that combined with uh, something that's more influenced by high fantasy. In other words, uh, there's more at stake. You spend more time in the wizarding world within this weirdness that's presented as normal, and the stakes get higher and higher as you, as you go through the book. So um, that's why I think that they're they're popular. Please leave me your thoughts down below. There's lots of things that she does well, and it's easy to overlook the technical skill of Joan Rowling um, just because one or two of the techniques that she used uh, are not super realistic or you don't like them. Um, and that's an important sort of counter to what I said before about just the abused child technique. So let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you all next time.